Over the last several, I'd like to say years, we've had several conversations with regard to sickle cell, and we continue that discussion to see, to get an update really as to the progress in which we've made. And Dr. Adida, I say progress because you have been working tire tirelessly over the last several years with regards raising awareness to sickle cell. Do you feel you've made any headway? I think so. <laughs> I think the awareness is coming. Sometimes I'm still surprised who all doesn't know, but all in all it's coming and people are very supportive, you know, so that means we're doing something right. I would have to agree. And I, I know one of the main, the driving factors was raising the awareness, yes, but specifically to have persons tested and to find out or to get that diagnosis. Have they been responding to that? Have people been going to get tested? And are they finding out what their diagnosis is? Yeah, it's not just the diagnosis of sickle cell disease. It's to a large degree, the diagnosis of the trait. Um, I think those patients with sickle cell disease eventually do get tested because they have symptoms, even mm. if it might be late. For those with the hemoglobin SC disease, they are diagnosed much later. But eventually, they will have symptoms and they will get diagnosed. The trait, however, that means the carrier, the person who has one healthy gene and one not healthy gene, he doesn't have any symptoms. Mm. So unless he gets tested, he doesn't know. And, and therein lies the problem because, as you well know, if two partners have the trait, and have a child together, they have a 25% risk for every pregnancy that that child is born with sickle cell disease. So once a person has been tested, do you find that they're taking that information back to their physicians to, to get further education about this diagnosis and what it means to actually uh, carry the trait? I find that people have to be more inquisitive because very, very often I do ask for the records of the parents. Remember, I'm a pediatrician, right. right? So, of course, I ask for the child's health card, but I also ask for the mother's health card. And oftentimes, mommy doesn't know whether she was tested or she doesn't know what it means. And there it is in the health card, written down as it should be, but the patient doesn't know what to do with it. And in addition to that, there is a whole lot of confusion out there what constitutes the trait. Mm. Because trait might be an S, but it also might be a C, and not everybody knows that. Hence the reason to have the sit down with their physician. Yes. What's the consequence, though, of this diagnosis? You started to allude to it with regards if both parents have right. or are carriers. But what if one is and the other isn't? Mm -hmm. Or again, are there other issues that the family may need to be concerned with if both are carriers. Yeah. The carrier himself or herself usually under normal circumstance will be fine. There shouldn't be any issues. Under excruciating circumstances that might be a different story, but you know, that's that's not your average. If it's about both partners having the trait, then the concern is for the next generation, simple and straight. And it's not that we're trying to, to scare persons, right? Because again, it's not something that's contagious or anything like right. that. But what are some of the obstacles to really getting persons to understand the importance of, 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 of knowing, having yeah. that knowledge? Yeah. You can't fear what you don't know. Right. Yeah. So I think we need to make people aware what sickle cell disease really means. And again, you know, when, when I talk about sickle cell disease, I always have to find a middle ground because, yes, I want to tell you how terrible it can be and how devastating. But on the other hand, I have a few young patients who are actually doing very well. And you don't want to scare them unnecessarily. You cannot ever take hope away from a patient either. Mm -hmm. So if I'm telling you this is a debilitating disease and don't explain to you that there's a wide range of what can happen and that all these nasty things don't need to happen if you take proper care of yourself, a little bit of luck, you know, 
then what do you do with that information? So it, it really takes the one-on-one. -on -one. And when I get a result for a child and it reads sickle cell trait, either AS or AC, I do make the parents come in to the office. And that scares them because we're not saying over the phone, your child has a trait. We say, please come in, we need to discuss this. Yes. Otherwise, they don't come, you see? Gotcha. Yeah. Is it because, why do you think they don't come? Because it's reassuring. It's just the trait. And, and that phrase, I don't ever want to hear it again. Yes, <laughs> yeah? yes. It's not just the trait. You carry a gene for a devastating disease. And you need to know what that means. So I have to explain to you what can happen to a person with a full-blown disease. Before we came on camera, I asked you a question about um, a step-by-step -step approach. And you said it's more than just a step-by-step -step approach to this. What is it? What are, I have to go back to those words of steps, but yeah. where do we take this? What's one of the first things that a, a family or a yeah. parent would need to do? All right. Um, ideally, we should have newborn screening. Many countries do. We haven't gotten it yet, but at least we have it approved. It got approved two years ago. It hasn't happened yet, not necessarily Antigua's fault. There were other circumstances that were beyond our control. And it's not abandoned. It's still a work in progress, and we will get it. So that's the first step. There is a newborn baby. The baby will be tested. The next step is that result needs to be recorded in the health card. Otherwise, it doesn't help anybody. Step number three, the result needs to be explained to the parents. And then suppose that child has a trait. Just suppose for a minute. That child will have to grow up eventually knowing what it means. Otherwise, the cycle continues. So let's say it, it, it is a hard decision. Suppose you fall in love with somebody who also has a trait, and it's the love of your life. Right. right? I mean, things happen. Right. But then you, you have to make a decision. You may say, OK, we won't have children. You may say, let's adopt. Or, because we are now talking at least a decade from now, not having the newborn screening at the this point in time, there might be other options out there that would allow you to have children. You know, medicine is advancing. Yes. So the last word is not said on that, but those are the consequences. Gotcha. But now, so taking the, the, con the steps, the consequences, those that respond, I, I know I'm not going to like the answer to this, but who responds better to you? Do the women or the men in the community is there right. is it equally proportionate yeah um, usually the women get tested more readily yeah when i ask a mother look you haven't been tested i'm not seeing your result why don't i send you to the lab she will go to the lab men don't like to be pricked <laughs> they don't like needles and some refuse flat out and we constantly have this discussion about encouraging men <laughs> to go see their doctors, to, to go have themselves checked. And you think it's that prick? We have a fear of being... Honestly, I don't know. You said earlier it's the time and another thing to do. But, I mean, that is the same for us women. So that's not really an excuse. <laughs> really because we make the time. We can make the time as we do with yeah, everything yeah. else in life. Yeah, and, and this is something that can really change your life. Yeah, And you might find that, whoa, good grief. Thank God I went. And I think also what you said, knowledge is power, though. Knowledge is Once power. Once you find out, it's not you know, it, this blissful statement. You can actually do something about yes. it, protect yourself and that exactly. of your family. But I, I can't leave without asking you about the clinic. Yes. How is the clinic doing? We've been very busy, actually. So, number one, there is a clinic. Right. <laughs> Which is important, <laughs> Which first is and foremost. Which is very important, right? Uh, we have a part-time nurse there, five days a week, and we're offering occupational therapy for two young girls who had a stroke. Mm. One is eight and one is going to be 21 this month. Um, we are offering, we have a support group. Um, we're doing patient seminars. So friend donated a projector 
Simple as that. And now we can do patient seminars within okay. the support group. We are doing the biannual sickle cell conference. So we are due this year, October 21st and 22nd, Saturday for the general public, Sunday for the healthcare providers. Okay. We came up with the emergency card in conjunction with the hospital. Excellent. That, that was a good idea. Yes. <laughs> so I, I have it here. It's a red card that simply says this patient has sickle cell disease and please treat pain crisis as emergency. And then we have the name and the blood type on there and whether the person is SS or SC. Excellent. So that, that's a good one. And then on Sunday, we're having a big fundraising summer fair together with the Lions Club and 100% local, and that should be lovely. And see, you have been busy, <laughs> busy. since we last sat in chat. Yeah. Well, Dr. Eddie, thank you for the update. Is there any additional information that you feel our viewing public needs to know specifically about sickle cell to continue that push to raise awareness? Nothing about sickle cell disease is simple, you know. No, I agree. So I, I can't really put anything in a nutshell, but I think the most important message is if you can't tell me right this minute whether you have the trait or not, please go to the lab. Yeah. I think that's a positive note to end on. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, too. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you.